Here. Brady Branham. Here. Shaq Branham. Here. David Gearhart. Michael Lafferty. Here. Beanie Nunnery. Roy Roberts. Here. Don Wilson. Here. Rep Portland. School of Business. Uh, invocation. Michael? Are you at Port? Gladly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other God, thank you for this day you've given us. Um, God, thank you for the weather, even the rain, um, for its purpose. Uh, thank you for everyone here gathered this evening and for our safety. Thank you most of all for Jesus. I uh, pray that you be with the people in this room, um, make good decisions that are good for the city, but also may that please you. Uh, we pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Everyone, please rise. Mr. Covers, thank the flag. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Approval of the bills. So moved. I have a motion to second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Uh, approval of 917 and 927 minutes. I have a motion to take a second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Visitors. Um, Bobby Monroe has to drive quite a long ways when he leaves here. Now he's going to discuss the max with us. And I'm going to let him tell you all about it and see what you guys think. We have a, Jennifer is reviewing or has reviewed a copy of the uh, letter of intent, I guess it is, or the letter of agreement, you probably have. But go ahead and tell us about that. Tell us okay. what you did. Um, I'm Bobby Monroe from uh, Winston Salem, North Carolina. And uh, we've been in business for 129 years. I only started by, I started the company 129 years ago. <laughs> kind of a joke. But, um, Anyway, um, we uh, are in the business of uh, third-party collections, any type of debt collections. We're, we're very, very good at it. We uh, are brand new into Kentucky. Uh, been very successful in the Carolinas, North and South Carolina, and also West Virginia. We've been in West Virginia less than five months. And this program that I'm um, presenting tonight to you guys, uh, in less than five months, we've collected over a million dollars in new revenue for about 16 municipalities. Uh, I've got your council meeting, this is my, only my second time in Kentucky, your council meeting tonight and then uh, Radcliffe tomorrow night and I booked Corbin today, um, London and um, the other one's day I met with, they're all very interested. Lexington actually called me, they're very interested in this program as well. But the way it works is we identify businesses coming in Prestonsburg without a business license. These are companies coming in from Florida, North Carolina, Tennessee, dropping products off and never getting the business license. You never get any from that business. Um, it will not interfere with anything you're doing here in the city. Um, the folks that are still doing their day-to-day -day routine where a retail uh, company brand new coming into Prestonsburg will still come in here. Uh, subcontractor want to pour a you know, concrete slab or hang some sheetrock, they'll still come in here and get their business license just like they always do. Uh, we'll get a copy of your businesses that you're currently doing business with right now, then we'll compare that to a list that we have. Um, I know you guys have a hospital, some schools um, here in town. Those are just a few that we look at. We know exactly who the hospital has for their vendors. Even though they're not for profit, their vendors are for profit. Um, and j right before I walked in here, I called the office. We found one vendor um, for um, the city of, um, of Hurricane, $98,000 for one vendor. They gladly paid it. They've been doing business there for over 27 years. You guys are allowed to go back five years. The statute allows you guys to go back for five years and collect penalties. So we would identify those new businesses coming in based on your list. If they're not on uh, the ones that we have on our list or not on your list, we go after those. We'll send you every month a new list of 20 to 30 new businesses. 
uh, that you will still approve, even though we have a list of your businesses, we still want you to approve those. Any of those businesses that you have been working with, um, you can just mark those off. If you, we send you a list of 30, you mark off two, we'll go after the other 28. It's all performance based. If we don't collect anything, you don't owe us a dime. So you actually get paid first. So what we'll do is we'll send out your business license, uh, just like you normally um, would have. And in, in the top right hand corner, we have a little DMX for DMX. We'll pull your ordinances off the website, calculate any of those fees that are involved in that, and then um, the check will be sent directly to you guys first. So you'll get paid first, and then we'll get paid 30 days later. We do 100% of the work, and the split is 50-50. And um, I've, I've always tell everybody, Mayor, you'll probably have a lot of people come through that door and want to do business with your city, but you'll never have people that come in and knock on your door and say, hey, Mayor, we want to go to work for you guys, but before we go to work for you, we're going to pay you first, and then you pay us. It's usually the other way around. Um, and the program is very successful, and um, like I said, we do 100% of the work. We do all the calling, all the collecting. Um, it will never interfere with any of your local businesses, your retail businesses, your hospital, your schools. They'll never even hear about us because all these businesses that we identify every month to you, it is a big revenue generator for a municipality your size, over 3,400 population. You're looking at anywhere from 100,000 up to a million dollars in a year of brand new revenue. That's important. But the, the key thing is that you've got so many businesses out there every month that are bringing their products in and not doing it legally. So what we do is we identify those for you, but all those companies that we identify for you, they're already doing business all around you anyway. They're delivering their products to Lexington, Louisville, Corbin, Paris, um, and they already have a business license there that just haven't been identified yet here. And so that's what we do. We make them compliant. So, Every year, you'll have anywhere from 240 to 360 brand new businesses that will be in Prestonsburg um, uh, record for basically. And then, so we share the revenue one five years back, and then two years going forward with everything that we identify. The ones that you have are your businesses. We don't touch those, those are 100% yours. But after two years, everything that we bring you is then 100% Prestonsburg. So, I mean, it is a great program. It's a great way to generate the revenue. It's also a great way to get all these businesses in compliance. And um, so with, with that in mind, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a real simple program. And that is one thing that we do. The other thing that we do six months down the road, if you guys are interested in doing it, we do any type of third-party collections, whether it be a police fines, water sewer, utilities, we can also do an audit on your utilities and phones. Those are things that we can do on down the road. But this is a very um, productive program that does work. Like I said, it's all performance based. If we don't find anything, you don't owe us a dime. Uh, but we have never had a municipality uh, that we didn't find revenue for, ever. Uh, and even though it's a two year agreement going forward, we've never had anyone stop the agreement because. We're finding new businesses every month, and we're bringing money to the city every month. Um, so, questions, concerns, ideas? Can you give us a, a, <coughs> an, a, a, an example of something that you all do find, some type of business that you that is you predominantly found easily? Yes, yeah, uh, uh, of a transporter uh, out of Florida, we identified uh, last two months ago. Um, one was 93,000, the other one was 66,000, and they are nationwide. Um, but I mean, it's just anybody that's coming in to Prestonsburg that's doing business, that's getting paid, whether they're getting paid one time or a thousand times, they're supposed to have a business license. Uh, but as far as, did that answer your question? Yeah, because you brought up like the hospital, the hospital's not in the city. It's, it's, Okay, it's not in the city limits. Okay, but we do have clinics. So we have yeah. clinics yeah. that are based off that. Right. Most of their deliveries. Okay. Go to the hospital, and then the hospital has couriers to deliver. Right. So any any business within the city limits um, is would be considered in this program. Schools also is another. Foods. Yeah. Schools, restaurants, absolutely. Anything like that. Um, 
um, sometimes I'm asked at council meetings, well, tell us exactly how you do it. I say, well, that's in the secret sauce. I can't really tell you. I'd have to kill you. <laughs> Are you doing any cities in the state right now? Not in Kentucky, sir. No, sir. Um, but um, this is only my second time. I met Mayor Les at the uh, conference uh, in Kentucky uh, a few weeks ago. And um, but we've got several that I know Radcliffe is signing up tomorrow. Um, and then, like I said, you guys are, are, are interested, but I've got probably 15 that are trying to schedule either a council meeting or get us on board to go. But in less than five months, uh, I've signed up 16 in West Virginia. In South Carolina, we have over 60 uh, that we've been collecting for. Would it be possible to furnish some references? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Is I the, think that's the rent negotiable also. No, sir. Well, if you want to pay us more, well, I mean, well, there's, a, there's a contract requirement in Commonwealth yeah. Kentucky. Right. If it's a negotiated rate, then, then the mayor has to. There's different avenues that we're required to do. Things. Yes, sir. Uh, so, our, our rate and being a collection good. agency, typically, a collection agency is no more than 30%. Right. right. So, well, if it's dealing with consumers on like uh, police fines, utilities, that is negotiable. But this is on the business license, which is not dealing with consumers. So it is a flat rate of 50 /50. That was going to be my question. Yeah. You said that you had a third party, like if you come in and identify as a collection agency, businesses that are, are owing, I assume that that 24 month period doesn't extend to that, that any any taxes they pay after that. You're, if we identify you to collect on just one certain year for them, then you're not going to... It, it would be any... any um, any funds that were received going two years forward, but on the consumer side of it, for like the utilities and stuff like that, that's a totally different agreement. That's like a nine-page agreement okay. because we got to, we're dealing with the Consumer Act and the consumer laws. Okay. But these are businesses, strictly businesses. But on this, we like I said, we do a hundred percent of the work, and you guys will not have to touch anything uh, in the city other than just approving that list once a month. So it is it's two totally different agreements um, with the business license and then any kind of type of debt collections, third parties. But you're, you're exactly right. It's, it's around 30, 35 percent. That is negotiable. Yeah. And where that's negotiable is on the age of the debt, the dollar amount, and you know, any over five years you can pretty much kiss goodbye. You're not going to get that most of the time. But anything that's like 120 days or less, we're very successful at collecting that. Like I said, we've been doing it for 129 years. Every phone call is recorded. We've never been in any kind of litigation. Um, I've never gotten any pushback from any business ever since we've been doing this. <clears throat> any more questions, Doug? Agreed to agreement? I did. You okay with it? Uh, you mean in terms of an agreement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to see some references first. Well, We'll need a read agreement and check references. And I don't know if that's it. We'd be required to. I already sent those to letters. I'm sure there's an indemnity in the agreement. I'll get those to you. Back, back up. But I'm, well, we'd be required to just say. Step out. The, the, uh, agreement for the mayor to sign, or, or is this something that we'd have to vote on? I think you're at the, just a discussion tonight, aren't you? Yeah, it's yeah, a discussion tonight. Give you an opportunity to know what's going on before we even give you the agreement. That was, I want you guys to be aware of what's going on. Now, it's really sort of professional services, and it's sort of not, because it's a whole new wild game state in Kentucky. Yeah. And I'd be up to the Attorney General and say, yes, professional service. Yeah, no, it's not. That's why I'm, we're, we're discussing here in the public meeting. You all know where it is now. Y'all, and we'll be getting everything out to y'all. I did want to send you an agreement, and y'all see 50 50 and did not understand what he was doing. Right. Because that just, you know, you see 50 50 scares you to death. Yeah. That's not all the taxes, it's only the taxes that they find and they locate. The, the collective tax. Yeah. And these are companies typically that, you know, no matter. Region. What's that? Yes. Yeah, they're, they're usually coming in, right. walking off, and leaving. Well, what interested me in it also was. I mean, delivery trucks or whatever you see, James can't go and follow all of them. No. Right. So, you know, you wonder, are they going through town or are they stopping somewhere? 
So, that's why I was I mean, asking. He's got a database that we'll never have. And that's why I was asking him too. This doesn't negate anything that we would do or I would do for the city right. to collect what we identify. This is simply a whole other. This is right. Right. This is different revenue. He only collects on what they identify. What well, we already have on our license, that's why, he's going, that's why he'll get a copy of our license. They understand that after two years it becomes ours also. That's 100% yeah. yes, sir. After two years, but I understand that. Stuff that we're not collecting for right now. Yeah. yeah. And we have, I mean, we have large, much larger uh, cities too that say, well, you know, we've got 15 code enforcement. I'm, saying, I'm telling you, you can have 30, they will never find what we find because of, of our, our database that we've you know, had over the years. Um, like Walmart is, is a big one. They'll send you a vendor list, but they never tell you 100% who their vendors are. We know who their vendors are. So when we come into town, we'll call Walmart or we'll call that vendor. And they'll say, hey, listen, they'll say, where are you guys now? I'll say, we're in Prestonsburg, West Virginia. I'll say, oh, okay, um, just send me what, what we owe. And, and we There's subcontracts, too, that fall out of those vendors that, That's correct. that are hard, hard to trace. And we just, we discovered a really big one today for Walmart, which is nationwide, so it's here, too. <laughs> so it's a really big, really big uh, vendor. So, uh, but yeah, this is 100% new businesses that are not involved with Preston Burke right now. But if you if your folks are working on you know two or three or four or five of those, you mark those off each month and then we'll go after the rest of them. Because the ones that you've been working on rightfully you should collect, you should get. Um, give you an example today we got another call from uh, Princeton, West Virginia, and they got a list from their hospital. He said we can't make heads or tails out of this. He sent it to us. We've already identified over 70 new businesses that they couldn't find. We knew we know what they're they're how they you know they, they abbreviate everything, so it's hard to find who they are. But we know who, who those companies are, and uh, we're going to start sending them 30 each month just on the hospital side, not counting you know the others that we're finding right now for them. So, but there's a lot of revenue here, uh, and you you look at <coughs> restaurants, you know vendors in there. Even though they say they've got, you know, they deal with two different companies, a lot of times they're dealing with six or seven different companies that provide food for them. So, but when, when you get references together, you know the, the new ones are nice. I'd like to see some older ones too. Oh, absolutely, yes, sir. That, those are the ones that we actually send you. Um, I thought I've already, may have not have, but I, I made references. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll get those references. tomorrow to you and uh, Sharon. Either one, yeah. just make sure. I'll, I'll send them to both and I'll get it to you. But yes, sir. I'll send new and, and older ones that, that have been with us for years as well. Sounds good. Um, now, let's get down to the elephant in the room here. North Carolina blue shirt. Rookie mistake. Come to Kentucky. North Carolina blue shirt. <laughs> Well, my son's a Marine, he loves Kentucky, so. Yeah. You're half off the hook. <laughs> my son loves Duke. Oh! I know, I know, I'm sorry. Well, that's all I do about. That's what I just got locked out. Oh, my God. If you get that, get that play ball, I'll immediately forward it out to them. Okay. And the next meeting we have, whether it be a uh, special call meeting or whatever, we'll make sure that your uh, that data max is on there to either be approved or disapproved okay. and loaded on by them. And, uh, it's voted on our sign to get to you quickly. How's that? That sounds great. I've never had anyone not approve us. Yeah. Just the pressure's on back on you. <laughs> because it is free money. But yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And it's nice meeting everyone. And um and do you mind if I leave? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, real quickly, the um, the car show does a um, when they had, when they started having the car show last year, their goal was to pick out a non for profit and all the funding would go to them with no questions asked. So well, there is questions asked <laughs> non profit stuff, but all the funding, all the money is out of it would go to them. So very fortunately, we had uh, a pretty decent car show considering the weather because 
obviously you can't get out. They won't get they won't get their cars out at that time. But you girls won't come up. <laughs> Family resources. You gotta stand in front of the camera. And, uh, And I'm going to ask Mike Wells to join us. He's the one that did the show. I'm actually going to let him present the check to you all. But uh, we have a check for $700. So cool. Uh, oh, it's already on the ticket. They're kind of folks from the ticket and they weren't ready. And just to get it, here's an additional $200 check. That's what we do. Oh, 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 we made that easy. We made that easy. Thank you all so much. So, uh, yeah. And I want to make sure, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, $120 feeds a child for a school year. Yes. So, so really we're feeding seven children for that whole school year. Yes, yes. We have 171 children in Floyd County. Yeah. And every Friday they go home with a bag of, I want to get emotional because these children. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> They make sure they come and get their bag of food, and we have children that make sure that their little brothers and sisters, they'll, they'll say, look at your list, has my little brother been here? Because they need this food. Um, they really need this food, and this will go so far in, in helping. And we, we really, just appreciate it so much. We really Everybody, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.
There being no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? They will be here two new appointments to the board. Come out right there. Hey, Mary Meadows, if I get a wind in that door, can we close the door then? Keep some noise stuff out loud. No, I have to keep the door open. That's all for me. I was quitting. I was Mary quizzes me all the time. I just want to quiz Mary there and catch her off guard. All right, deep wine weeks for no. We have Chris and Heather Moore here. End of this month is the deep wine weeks. We did it last year at the uh, September meeting at the MAC. You guys uh, talked to them before. So, uh, you guys got something? You, you want to speak first, Chris? Tell us. However y'all want to do it. Yeah, go ahead and speak. Tell, okay. us what, tell us where you're at. All right, my name's Chris Moore, my wife Heather. She uh, stepped out of the truck, and I think we're going to the ER as soon as we get done here. She can't, so she's not going to stand if that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, as I said, we leased the Equine Center from you guys last year in uh, September, I think it was. Actually, November before we technically... It took the paperwork in place. Yeah. Right. Took place and got in there. Um, we ran across a lot of adversity. Uh, we hit a lot of brick walls with this lease uh, of, of the facility up there. And uh, it's taken us almost a year to turn around and head the direction that we're are wanting this facility to go and uh, that's why we're here we we want to go again for the next year we've got a lot more confident uh, things would work in order now operating like they should and uh, you know we want to move we want to move forward again we feel that we have a, a better run at it this time taking over in november we went right into the winter i mean if you guys remember winter held on plumbing to april this year we know it's rained twice this year three yeah. times yeah, once for 45 days, next for 30. And there you go. There you go. Uh, we, you know, uh, one, one thing that we did have that was a little bit tough for us, we felt when we took over the Equine Center up there that we was walking into what was a working business. Uh, we walked into a shell of tore up stuff. Uh, pictures to prove. We took pictures from the get-go when we walked through the door or on a facility up there. And uh, it's... It's taken quite a bit of time and quite a bit of money out of my pocket to get this place back into, a, you know, a working facility. Uh, with each with businesses, we also own business in Nashville. We own the boat dealership. Uh, you know, got the Rockdale Boat Mart down there. And I didn't walk into my first year at Rockdale Boat Mart and just take off running and make $4 million. It didn't happen. It just took a little while to get it into order. And it's the same thing with here on this hill. It's taken a little while. And... <clears throat> You go into the business thinking that you're going down one particular road and you learn that there's a better avenue. And we have learned a better avenue with the Equine Center up there. Uh, we have a lot going on that's probably, I would consider to be behind, behind closed doors, so to speak, because it's not a big Prestonsburg City function. You know, we've got, uh, we go through the racing facility and the racing community all over, all over. We have people that come out of Florida that stay with us a week or two at a time and then they move on you know we've got the you know, trainers borders up there right now we've got people from top the hill that come down and go through the horses and, you know so on and so forth so it's uh you know we, we had an initial thought an initial plan on what we wanted to do well it, it's taken us up to this point i feel that this coming year we can better execute our original plan it's been a, a process getting to this point uh, there was not as much left as as a dad doing pitchfork on that. There was nothing. The place was good. Wiring tore out of it. Boards down. You know, just a mess. And it took quite some time. You know, uh, we, we work for a living too, so you don't have every waking moment to stand right there on top of it at first. And it took quite some time for us to get it back into what we call, you know, working a uh, regular place to be. And we want to push forward. We don't feel that we had a a real good opportunity this year to do what we originally wanted to do with it. And I think we uh, persevered and overcome quite a bit to do what we had done with what was there. You know, I've got some, a few questions that probably need to do in executive session. If we could, to discuss this, if it's available. Uh, okay. Um, we do. Does that mean we do that? 
We we can through well because because the current lease is in potential litigation. You can go into executive session I'd like to do that. under litigation, but it, it that's a that's a thin slice uh, in sixty one point eight one zero subsection one subsection G as in George says that uh, we can go into it for concerning specific proposal. If open discussion would jeopardize the siting, retention, expansion, or upgrading of the business. So, you say you're going to upgrade it. We can go into executive session with that, and you all stay in the room with us so we can discuss it. Um, but that's, are you upgrading the, the business? Upgrading. Upgrading the business. You're upgrading, you're going to be doing more, right? Every year. I want to upgrade every year. That's okay. why you're in business. So you might want to throw G in there too in case you do want to talk about where we are at this point. G. George and uh, C. Charles, 61.810, subsection 1. G is in George for the business discussions because of the upgrading. Because if the lease is to go back negotiation, it will be different. And 61.810, subsection 1, subsection C for litigation. So, any motion? I did. I got a second. All in favor? All opposed? Motion come out. Motion come out. Second, all in favor? Aye. All opposed. Okay. Uh, first reading of orders number 114-2018. At orders of the City of Prestonburg, Kentucky, amending ordinance numbers 06 to 2018 to reflect changes in the 2017-2018 annual budget. No discussion or anything because it's first three. Other new business. About three things we want to discuss. One is Triple Branch. I talked to Cliff Flat again today. I said, Cliff, I need to get this stuff out. Shorts we don't. The rains will catch us. Off the Cliff said that he was literally had the bid packet he's working on next time I call And Susan uh, heard it was already out. Uh, for bid. Susan had heard it was already out for bid, so that's what she was from. It was supposed to already been out, but there's a hang up somewhere. The maze branch is about six weeks behind it. The uh, the trail that we got the 1.9 million dollars in, uh, the grant from it is uh, NEPA, which is environmental investigation. They have to do it. it's come back. It's okay. It's now sent to the Office of Surface Reclamation Mine and Environmental. And as soon as they sign off of it, they will release the funding to buy the properties. As of right now, we have a 1022 closing date. So it's costing us nothing. There's not even a match on it. So, and the way it's set up, we can bid with local people too. They've already actually taken bids on getting the track. So they're moving pretty quick. Uh, one other thing is um, the festival this weekend. I, I have made, I'm making a list to make sure I don't miss anybody who we need to thank. Media did a wonderful job of getting in place. The parade was outstanding. The festival was about a third larger, larger than it ever has been before. We increased our activity over here by putting a, uh, it, yeah, it's a lumberjack thing, and it probably won't be that next year because the show's only 30 minutes. There's other shows like it that expand and have like an hour show, which would be, I think, would be a lot more entertaining for people because it's you got to watch them, and now since like it's over. So. <coughs> what do you think about changing the traffic flow around? Everybody I've talked to liked it. Uh, the consensus was they could literally keep 114 open until they saw a parade get right here. Mm -hmm. It gives them a lot more time to get in town. So, mm -hmm. so a lot more time to get in, and it's easier to get around. Because if you go out down there, once you get through, you just go right out there, and you don't have to fight the traffic. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty good. And uh, I mean, yesterday was there for rest of heart. We, uh, I took a video backstage and then from, from the back of the stage so I could do it and I started sectioning off and counting it. And I'm going to say probably 15, 1600. Wow. Because if y'all notice, we expanded our bleachers, we moved everything back. Mm -hmm. Well, they used to have stuff right on the sides. We moved it back and it was, it was shoulder to shoulder all the yeah. way. Yeah, but behind you, they were sitting on both sides of the road, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's why I'm saying probably 1,500, 1,600 people. 
And it was a great concert. Uh, you did 3,000 if it had been 20 degrees warmer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah probably so. 3,000, but we'll see the moves back yeah. through there. I will say this uh, TCN, the Country Network, was in, and we had a premiere show on Friday night over the back uh, with CMH 23 Live. And that's a project I've been working on for quite some time. It's not really associated with the city, but it sort of is because. Uh, if everything works out, then we'll put a TV station in the Mac, and it's going to represent all of the region. Uh, Mike was there, and, and I think Mike can testify that it was good. Brittany was there. It just, I'm telling you, it was just a great. Donald was there. That's right. Donald was there. They were good. Uh, taking our local talent, putting them in <coughs> being households, and then turning around and sending them back to that website that is introducing the Appalachian region to the world. It's an opportunity we can't pass up. Mary Meadows is there. Hi, right, Mary. Good comments. <laughs> yeah, you're on the spot now. I'm ready. Oh, no, come on, Mary. What do you think of it? Seriously, I'm asking. You're being Wednesday's paper. I got you one on. I didn't do it. Then. So, all right, I. Are they going to do an advisory board on this? Because I've heard. We are doing an advisory board on that. I've heard a couple of artists were like really like because the the local talent uses their own music. They don't. Do they, have they, they have to use their own. They have to. They have to. Yeah, and we don't. A couple of guys that stuff. said, you know, we'd like to be able because they have their own websites, they have their own albums. Mm -hmm. They'd like to be able to have because if you get twenty million households, just that you're getting a few extra. If you get one percent click, you're getting. Exponentially more than you get locally. And on Roku. Mm -hmm. yeah, you keep saying Roku. I don't even know what Roku is. <laughs> I got Netflix. So. You can't get on your glass tube TV. Let me tell you that. <laughs> okay. Can I get on my computer? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. But that was just that was just really really good. I'm telling you, it was just uh, man, I was I've been impressed with her professionally. But at the we had planned to do some work in uh, Ashland and fell through. We ended up coming over here and filming Troy Birch and Clay Jamerson, the whole concert. We signed a contract with Southern Link yet? No, we're still waiting on them to get back to us. Maybe we should uh, request them to put that channel locally. We can do that because we, we're going to have two channels. Well, I, I, well I mean, the they carry, but they can carry that channel I'm instead. Glad. They can change, they can do TCEM instead of GAC. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, we need to have some. Uh, We'll have some discussions later on once we get final out, once we get to where we can get to more. Of it. The FCC has now decided, of course, this is federal, that <clears throat> if we have a channel, they can take that channel as in kind franchise fees and take it off the table. So if we bring in two thousand dollars a year of franchise fee, they can say that's what that value is. There you go. We'll issue a check. There you go. So uh, that uh, Linda Ain, our telecommunications attorney, is great, and uh, they're discussing back and forth. And then when she gets everything hammered out, and then uh, this this FCC regulation just came out like two weeks ago. So I'm really glad you brought that up. All right, any other business? Is there some other business? Some business? Any business? That's uh, old or new business, but we don't have any developments on it. He's not gotten us a price back yet, so. Good question. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I asked those two over. I need that motion. Got it. Is that a motion? I have a second. All in favor? All opposed.